terms of our MCRPC patients, I think that urologists um, are becoming a little bit more comfortable, but there continues to be, Mike, and you would agree with this, this resistance a little bit, if you will, to prescribe abiraterone because of the mechanistically how Abby works, and you do need concomitant prednisone administration. Uh, it seems to be a big fear. It seems to hold back urology more so than medical oncology. Dan, for our urology viewers, is there, is there any data, has anything been recently published that addresses the, are there potential long-term adverse effects to the use of long-term prednisone? Well, interestingly, there was a paper that came out by Fazazi in European Urology where he looked at more than 2,200 patients who were treated with abiraterone and found that only 0.5% of those patients discontinued abiraterone due to a prednisone-related side effect. So it's really not a significant problem. And, and I think most of us that have, that have used the drug extensively realize that it, it, it's not a big problem. Now, we do know that there is some monitoring, but I'm of the belief that, as, as we've discussed, that these patients are sick and they need to be monitored. And I think this is, as we, as we tell our colleagues, this is not like giving an anticholinergic for overactive bladder. These patients need to be monitored, you know, not only for the side effect profile, how to understand how these drugs are metabolized, but also to, to, to keep continuous track on, on how their cancer is or is not progressing. You know, you see these patients, is this, is this I personally think urologists shouldn't be scared about the use of prednisone, especially because we know mechanistically how abiraterone acetate works and is required. So thoughts, anything that you can uh, sort of tell the urology audience, if you will, about you know, we shouldn't be so frightful and fearful of the use of prednisone. Yeah, I would agree that um, any additional complexity to the regimen of the oral medication is sometimes a barrier to its uptake. Um, first, it was kind of the secondary pharmacy. You know, when everyone was comfortable with writing for a pill, but then it required a little more logistics from your office and making sure the patient qualified. That was one thing. Um, then there's the side effect profiles, and we have to be comfortable with that. Of course, if you add two medications, a steroid and uh, an oral agent, then you have to watch for the side effects of both of those. I think good data that's pulled out of some of these large trials shows that Relatively speaking, the side effect component of the steroid is pretty minor. Uh, you do have to watch things like blood sugars and monitor, you know, when you use abiraterone with prednisone, you're watching for hypertension, fluid buildup, edema, you check liver function studies and potassiums periodically. But I don't think that's beyond the scope of practice for a urologist. And I, I think that these drugs seem to be very well tolerated by most, and I think as soon as uh, the urologist or the most capable, maybe not the most comfortable, but the most capable person managing that part of the practice in that multidisciplinary uh, mode, I, I think it can be done quite easily. No, and, and again, I think, I think uh, clearly this, this world is becoming more complex and there's gonna be more and more drugs. Like, like David mentioned, you've got Galaterone, you've got all these other new agents, I'm sure there's gonna be more coming as we get more comfortable looking at some of these drivers, you know, BRCA1, BRCA2, PARP inhibitors, immunotherapies, I mean, it's, it's just exploding. Uh, Dan, comments? So, so one comment, I, I think this, you know, I agree with Mike that steroids are not that difficult to give in this situation. The problem I have is getting patients off steroids. Generally, um, if we're putting patients on another clinical trial and like to reduce the prednisone, even though it's a small amount of prednisone, I have difficulty with fatigue uh, in tapering that and stopping it. So, uh, you know, managing it is not a difficult situation once they're on it, but getting them off for the next treatment is a little bit difficult. I think one of the other things about that article, it's uh, Kareem Fazazi's first author. I, I think I'm one of the guys in the et al. group on that, and, and one of the long-term <laughs> One of the long-term uh, uh, findings that we had was that in terms of you know, significant glycemic issues uh, and or uh, bone demineralization issues, it was very, very low single digits. So it's not a long-term challenge to, mo to manage patients with long-term use of steroids. And to your point, Dan, I think um, 
for urologists who want to take care of advanced prostate cancer patients, which it's a serious disease and it's, it's not to be dabbled with and there needs to be a, a subspecialization within one's practice to want to do this and do it well. Uh, picking up and, and being able to, to take on a new medication such as, you know, low-dose prednisone actually is, is, is not difficult. And some of your patients later on, you'll bring it on to help stimulate um, energy, sometimes occasionally even a improve appetite.